Well, Bennett Kessler filed this following report. With a big budget shortfall next year, Inyo County government's continued actions to raise employee pay has mystified some members of the public who have contacted the Sierra Wave Media Newsroom. Now, the action at Tuesday's Inyo board meeting sets a new policy to review elected official salaries every four years with no guarantee that they will go up. Now, that review now will happen in two weeks. The supervisor's pay is not being considered. Well, several weeks ago, Inyo Assessor Tom Lanshaw came to the board to say that he had not received a raise in some 10 years and requested one. They gave it to him, but now they wanted to review how they handle elected official salaries. There has been no automatic review of those wages, and some officials have waited a long time. So the board considered an automatic review period of every four years before elections. Now, the county administrator offered the supervisors that policy option. He also offered them what's called term pay. Now, in other words, an elected official gets a raise for every new term of election in addition to longevity pay. Now, Treasurer Alicia McMurtry said elected officials had been meeting about this issue. She said she and the Inyo County Sheriff Bill Lutz had met with the county administrator Kevin Caruncio. McMurtry said, quote, we propose both longevity and term pay. We bring experience back from term to term, end quote. However, Inyo County Clerk Cami Foote disagreed. She said McMurtry's view did not represent all elected officials. Foote said, quote, you can't place value on terms, end quote. Now to the board, she said, quote, consider that term pay might send the wrong message to the public that we pay elected officials more just because they are reelected, end quote. And, you know, Sheriff Bill Lutz supported an automatic review of elected officials pay. And, you know, Supervisor Linda Arcularius said it's the supervisor's responsibility to adopt a budget based on on resources. Arcularius favored the automatic four year review of salaries and no term pay. District Attorney Tom Hardy and others said it's a matter of reviewing the salary of the position and not the person. Clerk Foote added that it's good timing before an election to either reduce or increase salaries. The NEO board preferred not to include their own salaries in the new policy, but did vote unanimously for a four-year automatic review of elected officials' pay in the year prior to an election. They did not vote for term pay. Now, the salary review will come back for consideration on February 18th. And Bennett Kessler also filed this story. The last election for the Mammoth Town Council came at a time when town government looked bleak and burdensome. Two candidates ran for two spots. No one else wanted to step forward in a painful situation. Now this time around, three seats are up for election and things look better and one candidate has already declared. Now nomination papers become available coming up on Monday, February 10th. But Deb Perrell of Mammoth Lakes has already announced that she will run. In an email with her announcement, Perrell said, quote, My decision comes from the viewpoint that it has been a hard past few years on our Mammoth government, employees, community, and financial status, end quote. Perrell also said that she thinks now is a pivotal juncture and a time to work together for a strong foundation. Perrell's candidate statement is posted on our website, SierraWave.net. Now, the scene's currently held by Mammoth Mayor Rick Wood and Councilman John Eastman and Matthew Lehman are up for election. The top three vote getters will fill those seats for four year terms. Mammoth Town Clerk Jamie Gray recently issued a notice about the June 3rd election, and she pointed out that council members are are paid $300 per month and that candidates must be registered voters and live within the town of Mammoth Lakes. Nomination papers will be available starting again February 10th from the town clerk. Now the deadline for filing those papers is March 7th. Those interested in running for the town council encouraged to contact Clerk Gray and that phone number is 760-934-8989 extension 267. You can also go to the clerk's office at the town offices in the Minaret Village Shop Center. They're open from 8 a.m. until noon and from 1 to 5 p.m. Monday through Thursday, Fridays by appointment only. Well, Bennett Kessler also filed this report. 
25 years ago, the Los Angeles Department of Water and Power agreed on an enhancement mitigation project in Southern Inyo County that ultimately led to adding 30 acre feet of water for a high school farm project. Today, the Van Norman en Enhancement Mitigation Project remains undone. Now, Brenda Lacey, the agriculture instructor at Lone Pine High School, told the Inyo supervisors on Tuesday that 16 years ago, officials firmed up plans for water for the school farm as part of mitigation for the second aqueduct. Now, delays continued, and in 2012, the school managed to get a grant for water distribution from a DWP well. Now, the grant is at risk if LA keeps dragging its feet. Now, now this item is on the agenda for the Inyo LA Standing Committee meeting, which is Friday in Independence. Inyo Water Director Bob Harrington said Bishop DWP management didn't want to add this item to the agenda. Harrington pointed to Standing Committee rules and held firm that the item can go on the agenda. He said LA DWP staff were not agreeable to take action involving what's called the Van Norman Mitigation Project, which includes the farm water. Now the students have seeds ready to plan in April and the grant was extended through April. It's up to DWP to cooperate. Inyo is ready to handle envi environmental work on the projects. Inyo Supervisor Chairman Rick Pucci said, quote, this is a commitment LA made. They just need to make it happen. It's amazing to me. We have an agreement. It's on the record. Get it done so the students can grow. It kind of amazes me, end quote. Now, someone noted that students who started out at the project, uh, who started at the beginning of the project, were in their 40s, and it's still not done. Now, this is not only the mitigation measure that lingers in LA's playbook of the Inyo Water Department website is a list of 55 mitigation measures supposed to make up for DWP's extensive groundwater pumping between 1970 and 1990, and many are incomplete. Now, the Inyo supervisors agreed to direct the two board members on the standing committee, Linda Arcularis and Rick Pucci, to call for a critical timeline to get the Van Norman project and farm water going and decide who can get the environmental work done as soon as possible. Other items on the standing committee agenda include Owens Lake area groundwater development, revisions on the Green Book, mitigation project projects water use, Black Rock 94 dispute, and the county's proclamation of a local drought emergency. And again, that meeting is set for 1 p.m. Friday at the Inyo County Board of Supervisors room in Independence. We'll be back with more news.